initiating moisture. Welcome to the Moist Meter. Today we're looking at the new Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It's very rare in 2018 that you'll find a Spider-Man animation without Spider-Man's dick in Elsa's mouth, but Sony has done just that. They made a brand new Spider-Man animation, and surprisingly, it is tied for the best animated movie I've ever seen in my life. It's tied with Redline, turned the wrong way like a fucking idiot, but it's tied with Redline, which is my favorite animated movie ever made, and this is right up there with it. I might even say this is a better animated movie than Redline, and that shit right there is not something I say lightly. That's fucking blasphemy to me. Redline is nearly unmatched in terms of animation until now. This movie is so aesthetically pleasing and visually stunning. Everything is so stylized. I'm sure if Miles farted on screen, it'd come with like a kaboom comic book bubble flying out of his asshole, and it would look great. Every move in this movie is fucking fantastic to look at. Every action scene, every travel scene, everything is just so fucking beautiful. It's amazing. The visuals in this movie are unmatched. It is truly breathtaking. And it's got a, it's got a nice little story. It's heartwarming with some emotional moments. It gets dark as well sometimes, and it brings some great new characters to the screen. You got fucking Nicolas Cage, Noir, Spider-Man... Uh, Overwatch, Diva, Spider-Man, uh, Porky Pig, Spider-Man, Spider-Ham, they're all fucking cool little characters, albeit those characters aren't really explored or fleshed out or anything, they're just kind of there as comedic characters that kind of do some badass things occasionally, but they're not very important to the story. The main characters are Miles, Peter Parker, and Gwyn, and they're great characters, there's no bad characters in this movie because they're all well written, the entire movie is super well written. The only thing I'd say in that department is some of the one-liners don't land. One of Spider-Man's big gimmick is the one-liners. So when you have fucking 50 spider people coming out of nowhere all doing one-liners, not all of them are going to work. It's to be expected. That's not a huge complaint or anything. It's hard to believe that the studio that made this is the same one that shit out the Emoji movie. It's, it's unreal. I can't even fucking imagine that. That would be like as if Lil Pump secretly wrote all of Mozart's material. It's such an incredible turnaround from the emoji movie I, I just don't understand how the fuck they were capable of this greatness but then also shit out the emoji movie i'm happy it's been realized here though when we have spider-man into the spider-verse because this shit is fucking incredible it is an amazing movie the soundtrack is something else i'd like to point out i really enjoyed the soundtrack in this movie uh, the score fits super well in all the scenes when they uh, interlace the action and shit with some music it was really fun to watch i also think most people will appreciate all the little easter eggs that are thrown throughout the movie a lot of little uh you know, tidbits of Spider-Man lore and shit poking fun at itself at some points, poking fun at superhero shit at others. And of course, there's a Stan Lee cameo in here. Rest in peace, Mr. Stan Lee. Excelsior, he's in this bad boy and he's got a really touching scene. And that was cute. And the whole movie's just pretty heartwarming overall with the messages and the story. It's a really fucking great movie. And I can't stress that enough. Probably the best animated movie I've ever seen. And I, I'm saying that right in front of Redline too. And it hurts. It fucking hurts. But the movie really is just that good. I do have a major complaint, however. And that is that Kingpin, his motivation... He's the main villain. And his motivation is just pretty shitty. His plan is pretty fucking abysmal. I'm not going to spoil anything, but even if it, Kingpin accomplished his plan without Spider-Man intervening, he would have still been fucked. He wanted to unfuck himself with his plan, but even if he did, he'd still fuck himself. It, it's, hard, it's hard to explain. I'm sure if you've seen the movie, you'll understand what I'm saying. But no matter what would have happened if Spider-Man didn't step in, Kingpin would have come out on the bottom. He would not have won. His plan just didn't work. His motivation, his motivation was an emotional one, they did that well, but it just didn't make sense. It drove the plot, it led to the, you know, a lot of spider people coming in, and that was great. But he was just a pretty weak villain in terms of his motivation. Very fun one to watch on screen, and there is that bit of emotion they gave to him, but like I said, his plan's just pretty shitty overall. Let's plug this shit into the moist meter. I'm giving Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse a 95%. This is probably one of the best superhero movies in general ever made. And honestly, probably the best animated movie ever made. Beating out Redline ever so fucking slightly. It just ever so slightly. If there's a Redline 2 coming, I, hands down that'll beat this one. But I don't think we're going to see a Redline 2, unfortunately. But this isn't here to cry about Redline. This is to praise the new Spider-Man movie because it's really fucking good. That's it. See ya.